quoted as saying when it comes Excuse to training me. a filly and mare. Can, can you not do this when we're on a long train journey? You know, I appreciate people have private conversations. I'm talking to my camera phone. You're actually broadcasting. And? It's really loud and intrusive, and it's a bit inconsiderate. Intrusive? Yeah, it is. By, by talk. So if someone was having a conversation here, no, would you find that intrusive? No, I'm not conversation with anyone. It's quite It's literally over. going to take 40 seconds, okay. and then I'm going to eat my sandwich and coffee and literally not say another word. No, that's fine. Absolutely incredible scenes there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no. Right, you go to Sandown, and you're lazy, like me, you get the Sandown bus free of charge. Because quite frankly, I try not to walk, I try to save calories. So when I get to the gym, I'm an absolute beast. Anyway, <laughs> you like that, do you? <laughs> it's a beautiful day here, and uh, looking forward to some cracking racing. Hola, que tal? Off to watch Tower Bridge. Quickly sneak in a sheep of black coffee. After that abuse on the train, what abuse! If you ain't been to Sandown, look at that. Beautiful long straight. Such a cracking course. He's just clouted that fence down the backside. But he's had a non contested lead, more or less. But uh, he's going to have to improve his bloody jumping. Go on, kick into that one. That's it, lad. Go on, Tara. Go on, Tara. Go on, the bridge. Go on, the bridge. Big jump. Big jump! Go on, boy! Go on, boy! Go on, Tara! Go on, Tara! Hi, hi! Hi, hi! At Sandown! Winners! 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 Hi, hi! Good evening, everyone. Just left uh, Sandown Park here at East Train Station. And um, it's been a great day's racing. Pretty chilly, but. Uh, we done well with Tara Bridge, 7-4, and uh, Sensolano ran a great race in the Mare's race, 11-1. Finished third on only her third run in a Mare's grade two. She's definitely a horse to watch out for. And uh, if you haven't been to Sandown Park in Isha, you should definitely try and get along. It really is one of my favourite courses. Very pretty, very unique. But let's kick on with today's, tomorrow's form preview for Ascot. We've got the Ascot chase, some cracking racing, some old favourites, some young favourites, cue card, top notch waiting patiently it's set to be a brilliant race but first off i'm going to make the journey home and i'll see you all pretty soon blogger here i'm just back from sandown park it's been an eventful day i'll probably put in here what happened on the train what a ghastly woman she was how dare you talk to yourself on a train anyway it was great to meet all of you at sandown today um sandown as you know is an isha and it's one of my favourite tracks in the whole country. It's a really pretty venue. I love the layout. And uh, it's a really great place to go on a weekday as it's not too busy and watch some cracking National Hunt action. We had two bets on the day. Tipped up Chris Gordon's horse who won at 7-4. Very tidily a point on that, which was beautiful. And I tipped up Sen Solano at 11-1 to in the Grade 2 Mare's Novice Hurdle for No Williams. She stayed on very dourly in the final two furlongs. Showed a lot of guts and courage. It was only her third run over hurdles. She's one to keep your beady eyes on for the future. I think she could be half decent. Looking ahead to this weekend's racing, we got some great stuff. Cracking card at Ascot, and it's kind of the calm before the storm. How long do we have to go to the Cheltenham Festival? Let's do the roll of honour. 7, 14, 21, 22, 23. Ba -dum -bum -bum. 25 days to the greatest show on earth, the Cheltenham Festival. I can't bloody wait. If you're going to be there, leave a comment down below saying, Blogsy, I'm going to be there. Anyway, the card at Ascot's a cracker, as you can expect. You've got horses like Black Core 10 and a Grey 2, a good listed handicap chase, a quality handicap hurdle. Then we've got the big one, the Ascot chase, top notch, waiting patiently, Coney Island and the OAP. Q card, great horse on his day. Tomorrow won't be his day, will it? Let me know down below. Before we get cracking, just want to thank you all for all of your comments on these videos. They mean a lot to me. All of your retweets, all of your likes, it all adds up and it keeps me going to getting this material out there for all of you. Much love and respect to all of you. All I ask is you continue to comment, share and retweet. Love you all. Right, um, over at Goran, there is no Duvan, unfortunately. Will he ever be back in time to take on Altior? Who knows? Does Willie Mullins know? I don't really think so. But we do have our Duke taking on presenting Percy in the Red Mills chase. And we do have Mick Jazz, who ran behind Forheen last time. A little horse here for you all to keep your beady eye on in the 345, Sal Deer. Rich Rishi, Willie Mullins, entered in the Triumph. Very late to be seen this year, but um, I know to think a bit about him. He is odds on. 
watching brief, but uh, potentially an each way investment of 33 to 1 for the Triumph if he comes through this race unscathed. Over at Hexham, quality stuff there. Agripat was 5 to 4 with William Hill during the week. Top price 8 to 11 on now, runs in the Rendlesham. Race at his absolute mercy for Lizzie Kelly there. And you've got Black Lion in the big staying chase. And you've got Chef's de Zobo, the Santini form line. And over at Wincanton, Winnie Wincanton, we've got Chittabello taking on Call Me Lord in the Kingwell Hurdle. The real good quality action all over the country. Let's start reviewing a few races. And um, if you went through the video last week, some good few winners in there, including Wishmore from Mouse Morris over in Ireland. I always have a good look at the Irish racing. A bit pushed for time today, lads, girls. But uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're rocking and rolling. Right, let's kick off with the Ascot card. And let's hope no one minds me talking to my camera phone. Ugh. Right, the Ascot card has seven cracking races on it tomorrow. We kick off with the 115, the two mile three, novice hurdle. It's a grade two event. And the official going at this point in time is Suft. Captain Catastock for Paul Nichols is your favourite at the moment, marginally at 15 to 8. Dame de Copain for Nicky Henderson, JP Barry is a 2 to 1 shot. Count Maribel, 7 to 2. And I'm not going to talk about the other two because I don't think they've got a chance, so I won't waste your time. But Captain Cotterstock is a horse who's improving fast. Won really well at Wincanton last time out, off a 130. It's gone up to 135 here, has a penalty, has to give £12 to Dame de Copain. Now, I read Nicky Henderson's blog. He said he felt he run her back too soon at Cheltenham after her win at Utoxa. She only had a 16-day break. She's been given 90 days here to freshen up. And uh, there's been a bit of money come in for her already, Dame de Capain. And we all know Nikki Henderson, probably one of the most informed trainers this year, still operating at a 28% strike rate. Paul Nichols is currently operating at 16%. So Nicky's leading the way there and getting that £12 could sway it in his favour. Chuck Count Maribel into the equation here. Another really good novice hurdler. Picked up some great races this year. But his form's tailed off in his last two starts and you could begin to wonder, is he slightly over the top? Hard to say. I think it's a very tricky opener. And at this stage, I'm going to sit on the fence. You what, blogger? You're going to sit on the fence. That's right. The most outspoken man in racing is going to sit on the fence. If I were to have a bet, I would chance Nicky's mare here, Dame de Capain. Two to one, she's receiving £12. He loves freshening up these horses. He's an absolute master at doing it. Um, but it's a tricky opener there, and I would play with an air of caution. I think the exchanges in the morning will kind of show what exactly is happening. Right, if we kick on to the 150 here, we have a real lovely three-mile grade two novice chase. The Renan's down, only the four runners. But we've got three really good ones in Black Core 10, Miss Poire 4 and Mount News. Current betting, Black Core 10, 11 to 10. Miss Poire 4, 2 to 1. Mount News available at 9 to 2. Now, interestingly enough, I read in Paul Nichols' blog, and this is exactly what he says. It's important to say that Black Core 10 does usually improve for a run. And may, my head lad, Clifford Baker, and I both feel he will just need this race, which should put him spot on for the RSA. He will just need this race. Now, I don't think Paul's saying he's not going to win, but it's not exactly what you want to hear if you're backing a horse at 11 to 10 and going in for a hefty bet. Um, he's got to give £7 away to Miss Poirfoy and 5 to Mount News. So it's a little bit of a negative for me personally hearing that. Now, Black Core 10 has obviously been an absolute star this season. Seven chase wins. Paul never thought he'd scale these heights. He said he was surprised by the horse himself. You know, winning at Cheltenham twice in a row. Second to Elegant Escape. Went to Kempton on Boxing Day, winning the Cato Stars Novices Chase. Everything he's done has just been improvement, improvement. I've had the late Fountains windfall behind that day, who unfortunately fell. God bless that horse. He had the potential to be a, a serious horse. Devastated to lose him. Um, but Black Core 10, you know, he's top rated in the race off a 155. Miss Poirfoy, 146. Mount News, 140. Can't talk about Crystal Lad. You'd think a race fit here, Black Core 10, would just get the job done again. Um, if I were to have a bet, it would be him. But at this stage, unless there's a lot of market confidence, I'm a bit worried about Paul's comments there. A lovely horse here is this Miss Poirfoy for Anthony Honeyball. Now, um, if you look at that race at Warwick last time out, the horse who was third, Big River, went and scooted up at Kelso. I think it was yesterday. So the form's been given a really good boost indeed. She's a lovely mare. She jumps really well. And you'd like to think she's going to continue to improve. She really loves this soft ground. And um, getting £7, being 110% race fit and ready for today, you'd think she'd be a huge danger to 
Black Core 10. Mountain news for Ruth Jefferson. Malcolm Jefferson sadly lost us. He lost his late battle with a, a horrible disease. I don't even want to talk about it because I absolutely hate it. But uh, good luck to Ruth Jefferson. She had her first winner already this week. And uh, if she could have one or two today, that would be lovely. She got um, waiting patiently running later on as well. I was a bit disappointed with Mountain News. He couldn't beat what's in a name last time. Kind of felt he didn't truly stay to three miles on soft ground. That was my personal opinion. We'll see how he fares today. I think Black Corten will take the beating. But I'm fairly surprised to see Paul Nichols saying he might need the run. 225 is a three mile limited handicap listed race. It's an interesting three mile handicap, 42 grand to the winner, only seven runners. Fairly surprised by this, you know, for 43 grand on offer, you think there'd be a few more Saturday horses out. I suppose a lot of them are getting ready for Cheltenham, but uh, 43 grand isn't to be sniffed at. Top weight, well, not top weight, but your, your market, well, yeah, indeed your top weight. Gold Present currently heads the market at 9 to 4. Another venture, 4 to 1. Hollybush Henry, 13 to 2. Vila Rouge, 13 to 2. Trevor Nivene, 7s. Manella Daddy, 12s. And Regal Encore, the Enigma, 14 to 1. Let's start with a top weight. You know, he's a, he's a course and distance winner. He's gone up from 142 to 155. His Grand National weight has already been set. So if he wins here today, it won't make much of a difference. Um, I'm slightly worried about the ground here myself, and Nicky has emphasised that in his blog. I wouldn't want to be backing him today on three miles of soft at Ascot. You'd really need to stay well at Ascot, and I think this is really stretch gold present stamina. The horse I do like here is Kim Bailey's horse, Another Venture, a lightly raced seven-year-old who's improving fast, and what an amazing season Kim Bailey's having. You know, he's unearthed a lot of great novice hurdlers, novice chasers, and he's operating at a fairly decent strike rate. And he seems to have his yard in good form for the majority of the season. One thing I'm very keen on as a punter is a yard who's very continually churning out winners and decent horses. He won well at Hereford last time, idled when he got to the front off a 128. He's gone up seven pounds. Mickey Hamill takes off a handy five. He's going to race off a nine stone 13 tomorrow. A lovely flyweight in the soft ground. I think, you know, at the available kind of four to one, uh, he could be an each way bet to nothing. Some firms going three places a fifth of the odds. I'd be very disappointed if another venture was out of the places giving those terms. And uh, I think he potentially is the bet here. We've got Trevor Nivenet who won the race last year. But um, since he won that race, he's pretty much done absolutely nothing. Venetia Williams is obviously a trainer renowned for winning on soft ground. But this 11-year-old has to prove his well-being at this point and he's going to have to show a bit more oomph if we're going to take him seriously. V. Laroon Rouge, a nine-year-old again, another one who's just been bitterly disappointing in his last three runs. You wouldn't be surprised to see him come back and do something half decent here, but you kind of have one eye on the fact that it might be a bit of a pipe opener for Aintree as well. Regal Encore is a course and distance winner, but he's one of those horses, you know, you just don't know when he's going to run a good race or when he's going to run well. He pulled up last time out. Anthony Honeyball is in great form, though, so I couldn't put you off backing him. For me, the bet in this race is another venture each way. If you can get three places, a fifth of the odds, I think that's fairly decent. I think the favourite, Gold Present, is definitely vulnerable on soft ground. He wouldn't be for me tomorrow, but he's a lovely horse going forwards. The three o'clock's an ultra competitive two mile three handicap hurdle. Current betting, Dieg Mann for Barry Garrity, JP, Neil Mulholland, three to one. Kilda's Art, three is 130. Le Patrite for the good old Dr. Dr. Newland, 11 to two. Fixie Le Carp for Nicky, 15 to two. Stoa May Magic for Nicky is also available. Eights is top price there. Friday Night Light, what a weird name. Friday Night Light, whatever, 10 to one. Um, let's just start with the top one there. Dieg Mann, he's a French recruit who's hosed up at Sedgefield and Catterick. Beat absolutely nothing. He's got a mark of 130. Could be a handicap, uh, handicap block. We simply don't know. I personally wouldn't want to be backing a horse off a 130 in a tough handicap like this. We have no idea how good he is. The horse he beat that day, Blotos, did come out and win next time out at Sedgefield, beating Aaron Ladd. So the form could be useful. He could be thrown in. But for me... I wouldn't be looking to get stuck into him there. I, I'd be happy to pass him over. I'd more favour Kildazar, who's formed with um, Golan Fortune for Ben Pauling. It's absolutely rock socket. Golan Fortune has continued to improve throughout the ranks. After he built, beat Kildazar, he went to Sandown, stepped up to three miles, and just got beat by Paul Nichols' horse, top of the game, who's also very well handicapped. Melrose Boy was third that day. Folsom Blue went on to win that big race over in Ireland. 
So that whole form line with Kilda's art looks very, very strong for Ben Pauling there. And he is still available at 7-2, shortening all the time. And an interesting one here is Le Patrite. Been a big gamble in his last two runs, was 7th in the um, Lanzarote over at Kempton. Now, that was over 2 mile 5. It appeared he didn't stay, dropped back to 2-1 at Cheltenham, and then he appeared to get outpaced. So I don't think the trainer quite knows what his trip is just yet. He's back up to 2 mile 3, so they've gone 2-5, two, 2-1, two, 2 three and a half today. And I think this could be absolutely perfect for him. Um, 10 stone 4, off a one two seven hasn't gone up for either of those two runs. He's a really, really interesting horse here, the good old doctor. For me, the one to beat here is Kildazar. He's a course and distance winner. He has handicap experience. We know he can compete off his mark, Well, although he is higher, one two eight to one three five. Ben Pauling's horses are finally back in good form, and I think Kildazar could run a really big race here. It's an interesting um, handicap hurdle here. Fixie Le Carp's had a wind up. Um, he disappointed over fences, got beat at five to one on behind not another model. Uh, Nicky said that he didn't jump particularly well, so they're going to go back to hurdles and take their time with the horse. Off a one four three, he's another one could have a big chance. But for me, Kilda's art for Ben Pauling and Daryl Jacob. This is a fascinating race. Who are you backing in the handicap hurdle? The three thirty five, and let's face facts. This is why we all are going to Ascot if you're coming along. This is the best race of the day. This is an absolute cracker. The Ascot Chase. You know, what can I say about it? Two mile five, top notch, waiting patiently. Coley Island, get the OAP chair out for Q card. An absolute legend at the age of 12. He's won over a million pounds in prize money. He's an iconic figure in national hunt racing. Has his day gone? In my opinion, yes. But who knows? I've, been, I've eaten my words before. Top notch, nine to four, waiting patiently, nine to four. He's come in from 11 to four. Coney Island's out to fours. He's on the drift from three to one. No money for Coney Island at this stage. Q card 11s, Froden 14, Speridec 33s, and the rag traffic fluid 100 to one. 100 to one. But this is a fascinating race. Um, top notch has had three runs at Ascot and he's won on all three occasions. Came back this year at Ascot. Absolutely hosed up in the Christie chase, a grade two, hammered double shuffle, was impressive. Went to Taunton, won the Peterborough, the rearranged Peterborough from um, Huntingdon, um, beat Josses Hill there fairly convincingly. And the simple fact about this horse, and Nicky said it himself, he's no great workhorse, but what he does do is he jumps well and he always turns up and runs his race. You know, he was second to York Hill at the Cheltenham Festival last year. He won the Sissy Isles Novice Chase at Sandown. He's just an ultra game, reliable horse who always gives his all. He's one of those horses who I think, when I saw him down at Seven Burrows, Burrows, he just doesn't like to be beat. And if I were to have a bet, I'll talk about that in a second. Waiting patiently, Ruth Jefferson taken over from Malcolm, God bless him. You know, this is a really lovely seven-year-old, but the truth about the matter is, He's being put into the acid test today, and we're going to see just how good this horse is. And look, let's face it, top notch is rated 164. Waiting patiently, 164. Coney Island, 163. Q card, 166. Froden, 164. There's three pounds between all four of those horses. The handicapper has them all pretty much the same. It really is an ultra, ultra competitive race, and it makes it quite exciting. But this is an acid test for waiting patiently. Brian Hughes doing the steering. It's going to be interesting to see how he gets on tomorrow because he's stepping in to the big boys league. Coney Island is a lovely scopey horse. I remember being at Leopardstown last year when he was second to our Duke. He ran a cracker that day, got outstayed. I don't think he truly gets the three miles on soft ground. Had Disco behind him that day. Really good form. Um, came back this year at Ascot, won really nicely, beat Adrian the point who's since gone on to disappoint again. I don't really rate the form of that with more of that running in there. So it's hard to weigh that up exactly and it's hard to know just how good Coney Island is. He's slightly fragile as well. For me, it wouldn't be a Coney Island day tomorrow. He's not on my, you know, my radar. Q card was really disappointing at Haydock on the 25th of November to be 60 lengths behind Bristol Demai. Um, you just feel now that at the age of 12, the good days are behind him. Obviously, he won this race really impressively last year, beating Shantou Flyer. That wouldn't have been the hardest horse to beat. He just got beat by Big River up at Kelso the other day. Since then, he's fallen second to T for two, fell behind Bristol the Mites, two falls in three runs there, and then was pretty much beaten a mile behind Bristol again. Um, I think they're just looking to get the old boy round and um, be as competitive as they can. But if these young seven-year-olds 
can't beat a 12 year old going on 13, I think you'd have to be very disappointed. If you're having a bet here, I'd be steering you in the direction of top notch. Three wins at Ascot, trained by the master in Nicky Henderson. The horse obviously loves the race, uh, loves the track. He's been trained for the race specifically. He's had 65 days. He'll come here fresh raring to go. I wonder what price he'll be tomorrow. But at this stage, nine to four is still available. Cannot wait for that race. Up the top notch. It's going to be an absolute bloody cracker. Who are you backing in the Ascot chase? Let me know down below. Interested to hear your views on this one because I think it's one of those races that are really, really going to split opinion and divide topics. Topics, topics. Right, let's skip on to the 10 past four. <laughs> right, disclaimer, getting rid of the 10 past four, straight on to the 4.45. It's a brain damage race. The two mile mares race. Uh, I talked about lust for glory on my Twitter page at racing blogger during the week. She cost quarter of a million pounds. She won a Liz Rona point, beating Cash Me Outside, owned by top, tr uh, top owners. Nikki Henderson apparently absolutely loves her. Apparently her work's really good. I've heard some really good things about this mare from the right people. Top price at the moment is five to six. I will be backing this. No idea what price she's going to go off at. And I have heard Nikki say the ground isn't ideal. He'd prefer a bit of a sounder surface. So he would be slightly worried about that. But I know this is a really highly regarded mare. First time out, lust for glory. I'd be disappointed if she isn't winning the bumper in the last race at Ascot. Cracking day there, and again, Nicky Henderson has some absolutely huge chances. If you were picking my brains for the best bet on the card, oh, you know, I think at this stage, another venture each way at four to one, if you can get three places in the 225. Uh, I'm a big fan of Top Notch. I absolutely love the horse, and this lust for glory is supposed to be very, very good indeed. Firing straight over to Haddock. Fish and chips, please. Haydock, the three mile Rendlesham hurdle. Agrapat is an absolute standout here. He was available at five to four with William Hill during the week. I thought that was very generous indeed. Um, top price six to four on 1.66 here is going to take all the beating on the, in the world on heavy ground. Ran in this race last year to finish third on good to soft behind Zakanda. This year, he's got his ground. He comes here in rude form after beating Holstone up at Cheltenham. Agrapat, make no mistakes, I'll be disappointed if this doesn't win the 205. Boyt is rated 148, and you can see the difference there. We'll be getting 13 pounds in a handicap, is only getting six. This is Agrapat's race to throw away on this ground. Lizzie Kelly should be in the winner's enclosure in the Rendlesham. The 315 is going to be a real war of attrition. Three and a half miles on heavy ground at Haddock. You're going to have to be a real, real stayer to win this. Have balls, have guts, and you're going to want to have to want it. Because trust me, when you're running on heavy ground, I used to be a cross-country runner, it gets fucking tiring. And these horses are going to have to show some balls to win. The question you've got to ask yourself as a punter is, Black Lion off a mark of 161. Are you a backer? Are you a layer on the Bet Dak Exchange? It's one of those questions. He's obviously got the class to win. He's got great entry form. He was second in this race last year behind Vion La Rouge. That was off a 152. He's nine pounds higher this year, carrying 11 stone 12 in that ground. For me, I'm not too enthused about it. He's your current 5 2 favourite. Wild West win fours, the Dutchman fives, three faces, West sixes, Mystery ten, Sisol twelves, Yalarenki fourteens, and Sir Mangan is 20. Again, not many runners in this. I think we've got a late non runner, only the eight now. You wouldn't want another one to be pulled out, or the whole each way aspect goes out the freaking window. The Dutchman was transferred over to Colin Tizard's yard and has been, you know, a decent decent improvement from Sandy Thompson's won really well at Haydock last time over three mile one on heavy the handicap has gone in with a 13 pound rise he's also going up from three mile one to three mile four I don't think that will be a problem but the the stone extra weight well that could certainly be a big problem the horse I like here is down the bottom he's called Wild West Wind trained by Temp Tom George he's had a good solid year this year he's a nine-year-old by Western I will love the soft ground very lightly raced He's only had the one, two, three, four, five runs over fences. So you can see what a late developing chaser he is. But he won a nice race there at Chepstow, went for the Coral Welsh National, and he fell pretty early on. So he's been given time to get over that. It was a horrible fall, but off a 10 stone nine and a mark of 144, I think Wild West Wind could run a really decent race. He's four to one. Again, if there is eight runners, 
which there is at the moment. Years one non-runner, a quarter of the odds. It's even money a place. He'd be the one I'm, I'd go on there. But um, it's a tricky one. That are you a backer of Black Lion or are you a layer of Black Lion? Let me know down below. I think it's a really interesting race. You know, when you get this heavy ground, you've got to have a lot of guts. Right, skipping on to the 425. Now, I tipped this horse when he won last time out. Chef's de Zobo. The Santini form line is really working out exceptionally well. And again, this is another step up for Chef's de Zobo here. It's the 2 mile 7 Albert Bartlett Novice Hurdle. It's a grade 2, and it's a competitive race over 3 miles on heavy ground. Chef's de Zobo went to Kempton hammered secret investor we were on him that day that was on soft ground so i think he'll handle the the heavy you never truly know if a horse is going to handle heavy ground until they go on it he's very short in the betting at six to five shannon bridge trees goland fortune sixes cool hall eights upper town prince 14s and then we go through the rest but it isn't the most competitive of races for a grade two you have a look at it and it just looks quite weak for this this kind of a race Golan Fortune obviously brings in some brilliant handicap form. He beat Kilda's Art second at Sandown last time out. And I'm surprised to see him available at 11 or 2. But then again, you would be slightly worried about heavy ground. Shannon Bridge ran a blinder at Doncaster last time behind NSC, Ennis Coffee Oscar, trained by Emma, Emma Lavelle. I wouldn't be too sure what the, the kind of quality of that form is. But, um, you know, Chefster's Oboe's done nothing wrong. Nicky likes him. Noel Feely's doing the steering, and I think it could be another winner on the board here for Nicky Henderson. If you're not on Chefster's oboe, Golan Fortune each way at sixes does make some appeal. It's just a tricky race, you know, backing in heavy ground in a few weeks' time when the, the sun starts to come out, all of these form lines are going to chop and change, and your job as a punter is to try and get tuned into the horses who love the heavy, love the good to soft, soft, and make those adaptations. And it's, uh, it's going to be a fascinating day. Overnight, you get some kind of market patterns, but looking forward to tomorrow in the morning, starting from half seven, you're really going to see where the money's going. Cracking race this over at Wing Canton, the 245, the Kingwell Hurdle. It's a grade two, and we've got some horses who aren't really on the, on the, or are on the fringe of wanting to run in the champion hurdle, but let's face it, they're not quite in the Bouvardere League. But then again, who is? Not even Fourheeners at this stage. Chittabello, 6-4. Call Me Lord, 7-4. Elgin, 11-2. Flying Tiger, 16. Cliff Sadova, 20. Let's start with a few of the outsiders here. Cliff Sadova, a lovely juvenile last year. But he's coming back on heavy ground here. Or is it soft or heavy? It's heavy at Wing Canton. Ruling him straight out. Flying Tiger's rated 140. We'll be getting a lot of weight and a handicap. Have to rule him straight out there. Elgin has to carry a penalty here, which... It's a little bit unfair in my opinion. He's got to give four pounds away. He also has to prove he handles heavy ground, which he hasn't in the past. Elgin, for me, would simply be out the window. He's going straight out the door, which leaves two. Chittabello versus Call Me Lord. Now, I backed Call Me Lord at 9-4 to four during the week. I tweeted it out after I backed him. And the reason I backed him at 9-4 to four is I thought he wasn't a 9-4 to four shot. Didn't really foresee the ground being this heavy, but he's got great form on heavy ground, so I'm happy to see the rain. He hammered our Merlin last time. He's up to 152. Chittabello's 156. And make no mistake, Chittabello's no mug for Dan Skelton. He's a really decent horse. Was second to Yanni Yanworth, the flying orange machine here last year. This year, he's ran behind my tent or yours. Got out battled by the new one at Haydock last time when he was getting six pounds. I was a bit disappointed by that. I think he should have, should have been able to beat the new one getting six at this stage. But I think that's just Chittabello's level. You know, he is around the 156 source. So what I'm banking on here is that Call Me Lord has a bit more potential than Chittabello. Chittabello himself seems to really like this heavy ground, so it's going to be a fascinating test. I definitely think this is a two-horse race. I have backed Call Me Lord at 9-4. to four. I'm going to stand my bet, and uh, I'm hoping Aidan Coleman can bang this one home. It's a cracking champion hurdle trial, this. And if Call Me Lord were to win in fairly decent fashion, you'd think he'd be a viable each-way bet for the champion hurdle. Currently available at around 20-25-1. to one. Good racing there at Wing Canton. Let's skip over to the Irish scene. So the news is there's no Duvan yet again. The whole will he run, won't he run, will he run? Willie Mullins, Willie Run, do you get it? Joke? Uh, bad joke, sorry, boys and girls. Um, there is no Duvan, but we do have our Duke taking on presenting Percy, chucking a toy fuil, a toy, a toy fill into that equation, and Vazor Lido, Bally Casey, the old boy. It's a decent grade too. And, you know, our Duke has to give seven pounds away here to presenting uh, Percy which is, isn't that worrying, but what is more worrying is the fact he's dropping back from three miles to two and a half. On top of that, 
He's only had 13 days to get over his run in the Irish Gold Cup. I'm surprised to see him out again so fast. I won't be a backer of our Duke. I may be backing presenting Percy. He's a course and distance winner. He's a lovely seven-year-old. He's rated 157, only £11 below our Duke. Does get seven, which means he's only £4 wrong at the weights. He's had 23 days to get over his romp in a hurdle race. He'll come here fit. 110%. Um, he's won over 2-6 at Galway. I don't think dropping back in trip is going to hinder presenting Percy as much as it will hinder our Duke, who again hasn't had long to come back from that run in the Irish Gold Cup. That was a gruelling contest, make no mistake. A toy Phil hosed up at Furler's last time, beating that dodgepot American Tom. He always ducks it. Hard to know quite how good that form line is. But there's not a lot between a toy Phil and presenting Percy on official figures, but he does have a penalty, carrying 11-8, presenting Percy off 11-3. I'm going to be honest here, I'd be quite disappointed if presenting Percy can't win this race. He's favourite for the RSA chase, and you'd be hopeful he goes and wins this before he goes on to better things later on in the year. The Red Mills trial, not a grade three hurdle, was a decent race. Mick Jazz, he seems to be running behind all the big boys all the time, but this is his day to potentially pick up the pieces. He's your 11-08 favourite, Lagos de Vegas is 7-4, and then it's 9-1 to one bar. Again, it does look a two-horse race here. Sorry to sound boring, but as a punter, you've got to analyse, look at the ratings, take it all into consideration and make an assumption. And my assumption is it is a two-horse race. Willie's horse is getting a nice chunk of weight there, running off a 10 stone 8, but it's a big step up in grade. And Mick Jazz is a decent horse. I'm sure they're going to want to win this 30 grand prize. Only seven lengths behind Super Sunday and 14 last time out. It's a good card there at Goran. If you're going racing, enjoy. I think I already mentioned in 345 of a bit of a dark one. Sal Deer, I've had a little nibble at 33 to 1 for the Triumph. Hasn't ran this year. If it wins this and does it well, it will go for the Triumph hurdle. Sal Deer in the 345. Might be worth two quid each way for all of you at home. Skipping ahead to Navan on Saturday, if it goes ahead, the 220. It's a two mile five grey two, the Boyne hurdle. And Diamond Calchua was real, a real eye catcher there behind presenting Percy at Goran on heavy. I don't think he quite stayed the three miles, dropping back to two mile five. I'm not quite sure what price he's going to be. I'm presuming in the region of around five to four, 11 to eight. Davy Russell booked for Gordon Elliott, but I think the drop back from three miles to two mile five could see this horse winning this grade two. He gets a lovely five pounds of Bapoom. The other big contender in there is Lieutenant Colonel, who's been fairly disappointing, but this could be Diamond Cashaw's race to lose. That's in Navan on Sunday in the 220. Right, I'm off to make a bit of grub. I'm absolutely starving. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to drop a comment down below. Retweets mean love. Can I do that properly? There we go. Look at my big beady eyes. That woman on the tube. God, what an absolute disaster she was. I think as you get older and you do a bit of yoga and meditation, you learn to keep your cool under pressure. I showed her who the boss was. What's the best bet for tomorrow? I'm going to really stick my head into the form book and delve a bit deeper. Could be a Nicky Henderson double with top notch and lust for glory. That would pay around five and a half to one. But uh, I'm going to try and dig something out. Punting's been going really well this year. And uh, I'm looking forward to a great day at Ascot tomorrow. If you're coming to Ascot, be sure to hit me up. It was a cracking day at Sandown today. And I'm off to make a bit of dinner now and uh, wind down for the evening. Let me know your best bet of the day down below for tomorrow's cards. I'm interested to see what you're backing. And um, let me know who's going to win the big Ascot chase. Is it going to be top-notch waiting patiently, Coley Island? Do you believe in the old boy? Do you believe in miracles? Cue card. I bloody don't. See you all at Ascot tomorrow. Lots of love. Peace out. Your boy, the blogger. Always trying, no matter what they say. A little bit of assistance in the saddle. You on your good thing. One hand drive, Trev. One hand drive. You on your good thing. Straighten her up. Two to go. You're ten clear. But this man here, he's pushing. The second favourite. The odds on chance. You are my son. Couple of slaps down the back. <laughs>